Good morning, fish heads. Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates, and it's time for yet another small water spray session. Today we're focusing on Ohio, but it's not just Ohio. Uh, many, many central and northern areas of the United States and creeks and streams have these little guys. This is the blue breast darter, and it is indicative of very healthy water. So if you guys have these, similar to the hellbenders, hellbenders obviously being reptile, um, darters are fish. And we're concentrating on that today. But anytime you have clear water, clean water and you see darters generally your water quality is pretty good we're going to do this a little bit differently normally if we're going to prime something like this and this is a flat sided small build twitch bait comes from my buddy raymond lou across the pond actually across two ponds several ponds um, it's a pretty good little twitch bait. It's got a tight wobble when it runs. It's got a, when you're kind of twitching it, it's got a really cool flutter action to it. And it's a slow rise. So I like it a lot. It's great for this purpose, for small and, and skinny water. And we would generally be doing a white primer on most of the stuff that you see me do here. But today, because if you're looking at that picture, I'm going to probably flip between a couple of different pictures because I couldn't choose one. There's a couple of good ones out there. Um, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a, a blue undertone or like a sepia brownish undertone underneath the, um, the scaling, which is kind of like a cream color almost, creamish yellow. So I'm going to start with a couple of wicked colors this morning as my prime, a detail blue green and a detail burnt orange. Let's start out with the detail blue. Don't need a whole lot of this, just enough to get some random coat in there, real thin. Just a little bit, very, very light spray. And I'm going to come behind that with some detail burnt orange. Just need a drop of that. And we'll put just a couple of random splotches, maybe get the top. Just a couple of random splotches in here so you guys can see what that looks like now. Heat set. We gave this a quick heat set and I'm just going to use ordinary everyday scale for this netting. Just need a piece that I think will be long enough and that one will. Take that off the helping hands. I'm going to kind of work this at a diagonal since it's a jerk bait. It's got two skinny ends and the fat part is in the middle. As long as I can get coverage, we should be okay. Now, if you wanted to get a little fancier with this, you could use um, something from the produce section of your local grocers, um, something that I use when I have it, and I don't have it on hand today, is the garlic bunch keeper. And I'm sure you guys have seen those. So I'm just gonna put that on there and then we'll just grab a couple of these clips. I always keep a cup of clips on hand because I use mesh and scaling and stuff to aid my, uh, my painting frequently. Those of you that are prone to seeing this on the channel know that I use quite a bit of stuff. A lot of it is just 
wherever I can find it from. And then some of it is from legit companies that sell stencils and things of that nature. And we're just gonna clip this not super tight. I don't want to scratch the uh, this transparent primer. And if you guys have been watching my Facebook feed, I did a little color shift like a switcheroo. It's not that difficult of a magic trick and this might be uh, an example. Not the scaling is a little thin but it we still might be able to pull it off and usually with stuff like that like that craw and I'll pop that little video up now for you guys that's another in, uh, another instance where I'm not using a white primer I'm using a transparent primer usually colored and what I've found at least in the testing that I have done is that I can pretty much get the desired effect to change whether I'm in like if I'm in dirty water obviously you're going to see more of that profile bait and you'll see the colors that are on the outside but if you have a, a gin clear bluebird sky day and the bite's a little tougher you're going to see like on the one that I just showed you you're going to see that purple because the sun is actually shining through clear water so it's going to look a little bit different and it's a neat trick to pull off and it can be a very, very effective tool to use. That's just something different, something that I like to do. So we've got that netted off pretty good, I think. Now we're going to come back over this, and we're, again, not going to spray super hard. I'm going to pull this off of the table so you guys can see where I'm spraying a little bit better. I now have that opaque white that I would normally have as a base coat or a primer, but now, because we're adding another color on top of this, and we're really only wanting that little bit of blue or, or splash of brown to show underneath our scaling in between to give it more of a natural definition, I'm going to add this real light coat of white over the entire bait, at least everywhere where I can get it. And I'm going to try not to work at an angle because I don't want to get any paint up under this netting for the scale. I'll just give that a couple of real light coats and now we can work on our next color. We are going to be reducing and I've got, I just reuse these over and over again, but I've got a few drops of the Wicked. I'll show you what it actually is. It is a 4011 fast dry reducer. You guys can see that. And I just have it loaded into these little spray bottles and I do the same with my, with my cleaner. I just like the squeeze. I like the pressure that it comes out when I spray it into the chamber for the cleaner but I've got probably five or six drops of reducer in there and I'm going to use a, a thinner opaque white and I'm going to add several drops of that eight or nine and then I'm going to add just just the slightest bit of yellow to this if I could get a half a drop out, I would probably prefer to do that because yell I mean it'll it'll tint it real quick. So we want a really light, light, light color. And I'm just gonna kind of swish that around. And then to that, I'm gonna add just the slightest bit of bone. Just a drop. Grab the end of a paintbrush. And we're just going to get that happy in there. And if you guys are noticing on all of the photos or both of the photos that I'm going to kind of flip back and forth between, it's a super, super light color. And grab a piece of paper for you guys, show you under good light what it looks like. That's your color. Very light. Now you'll notice 
towards the top and the bottom edges it gets a little bit more um, like a tangerine color or a lemon color almost like a, one of the lemon sunfish but in the middle of it it's pretty much just this little bit of and I, you don't need much and I've got reducer in here so I'm just gonna put this few drops in the chamber and we're gonna shoot both sides of the bait real quick leaving if it doesn't cover the bottom that's okay because we'll get a little bit darker there and I'm then I'm probably going to come back over top of this um, with a pearl white you guys can see just how light that is nice and light love that color and I do have enough with the reducer it'll it'll last a little bit longer for you there we go give that a nice coat there we go just use all that up and now I'm going to come back immediately in the center of this with a little bit of pearl white just a couple of drops all I need just to lighten that up a little bit more and the other thing the pearl white is a little bit thicker so if there is any of that yellow left in there it'll pull that out of the chamber a little bit better so there is that I am going to pull that out and now I'm going to use a non reduced we're going to kind of do this color this is sunrise yellow it's a little bit more orange a little warmer of a tone this pale yellow is a fairly cool color cool is in um, cool light and warm light so your yellows and your reds and your browns those are warm colors your blues and your greens are cool colors so now we're just gonna hit just a little bit of the tail and the breast and then hit the bottom same places that we've gone and yes we are going to come back and put that blue green back on the breast after we're finished I might just throw just a real easy strip like that but I'm also because the top of this gets a little bit darker I'm also going to grab just a bit of a sepia super light and with without heat setting I'm going to add just a little bit and I'm staying with thin colors here um, colors that don't need to be reduced that much and I really for that application I really like these De La Rowney colors this also needs to be a very light dusting just across the top just like that maybe just a little bit on the nose here there we go back towards the tail and then to this I'm going to add just a drop of my favorite detail black magenta two drops because we'll do two drops and then maybe one more drop of the sepia and one drop of reducer mix it right in the chamber and this is going to be our stripes and on both of these I think we're looking at a male breeding darter and his breeding colors but we're going to put eight stripes all the way down one of the neatest things that you can do kind of improvise when you have something clipped down is that you can use your end clips and put those back in your helping hands and it'll keep that I mean it'll move a little bit on you but not like it would if you were just trying to freehand this or trying to figure out a way to put them back 
to, it's almost impossible to do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a little bit of, see if I can find it, of the straight edge that I like to use. And because it's such a small canvas here that we're working with, I'm not going to do both sides. I'm just going to run the stripe and keep it light coming from the back to the front here. And I'm going to pull this side off since I'm using, there we go. Since I'm bringing it back this way, I don't want it to hit into this clip here. And we're just going to start at the back. Bring that pressure down just a little bit. See, I almost messed that up. There we go. That's better. Let's try that again. Start at the back. And then just run. All the way down. Try and keep them equal distanced. Nice and light. And on both of these pictures, it does show it, the stripe actually in the gill plate. Um, on a lot of these, it doesn't. But there's what we've got. And we're just going to stand this up. And yes, we're going to do that little trick because now we have one side. So I can come and dot the top of this here, here. And just go all the way down. So we'll have a reference point. Pardon the pun. Ha ha ha. I can't see that very well. Nice little reference point to hit that other side. So that they'll be even on both sides. If you guys are new to the channel, you're like, ah, neat trick. If you guys are old news to the channel, which I love all of you all, all y'all then you know I do that a good bit. It's a good teaching tool though. And we'll just line this up. Yep, he's barking. But then does that surprise you? Nice and light. Make sure we're down. There we go. And one more. And you'll also notice on this particular build that the dots, the orange dots, once we take this off, cover the scales, a lot or cover the stripes. On a lot of fish, they don't necessarily cover those stripes. Now we can go back and kind of cover those black dots up. Heat set. Now that our stripes are on, our scales are set, we can go ahead and pull this netting off. And we should be able to see just a hint of that darker undertone. I like that. While I still have just a little bit of the sepia left in the chamber, I'm going to come and shade these eyes here. Just nice and light. And I'll set this back onto the helping hands. Yeah, I know, I know. Probably should have set my airbrush down first. It's going to be okay cleaned out my chamber. The next thing I'm going to do, I don't want it super killer dark, so what I'd like to do here is add in to what little bit is left here, just a couple drops. I mean just a couple. I'm going to hopefully have enough to put in the chamber, maybe. Maybe not. 
but even if it's just a couple of drops, there's only one spot on this fish that really needs that where it is and hopefully I can scrape enough of this down to where I get a couple of drops out of it. That's a pretty decent, almost looks like sherbet, doesn't it? Cool color. See if I can get this down in here. It's like the Heinz 57 commercial anticipation, folks. It's not just for breakfast anymore. And come on, give me one or two more drops down there and we're good. So this is a cool little fish. It's going to be a little bit darker of an orange when I do the uh, dots. And I'm going to do those with a double zero round artist brush. That might be enough, maybe. We're just going to add this. just below the gill plate and then just a little spot on the tail. I'm now going to add just a couple of drops of white and get that going through make sure I got all the cleaner out of there. A couple of drops of white and we're going back to our blue green We'll add a couple of drops of blue green in there. White's going to soften that up a little bit. Yeah, I've been dropping everything today. Y'all haven't seen the most of it. Most of it's off camera. But yeah, that's it's making it a little bit lighter. I think that's manageable. Just lighten that shade up a good bit. Still pretty dark color. But we're going to go super duper light on the throat area of this and you can see it's already kind of there from where we had those come on now there it is that's pretty much it that's where the blue breast comes from thin line of it there Ta-da! Just to what was in the cup here, I put in my tangerine orange, which is a pearl color. I like using pearl on detailing as well because it will shimmer. Could probably get a little bit darker on that. Just add a couple of drops of Sunset Red. It's way more than we're going to need. One more. For this, but I can pour it back into my... I have an orange that I use for like an, a burnt orange. And I can just pour off the rest of this into that. So it will not be wasted. Okay. That should do it. I like that color. Get rid of that. I'm just about ready for another paper towel. That one's seen better days. Oh, let's see. I think we're going to use this one. That's a little bit too thick for the real estate that we've got. So I'll just this one I've kind of trimmed and shaved down with an exacto knife so it's got that nice little crisp point on the end of it and for this I'm just gonna kind of randomize my pattern and I'll do the same kind of randomization on the other side I'm just setting my hand on the edge of this helping hands here and I, I am seeing a couple of them a 
across the stripes. And it doesn't have to be the exact pattern. I would imagine that no two fish similar to a fingerprint have exactly the same number of dots. Try and keep them small. That one might be a little too big, but I'm not going to sweat it. And then once these dots are on and we heat set it just a little bit, I'm going to put the uh, pectoral fin on and we'll be using Russ Allen's Insane Custom Stencil Fin Wheel, one of my faves. I think he just had recently had a loss in his family, so condolences, Russ. We're thinking about you today, my friend. If, uh, if you know Russ or you are part of the, the Facebook community on his Facebook page for Insane Custom Stencils, let him know you're thinking about him today and this weekend. It's been crazy times, folks. Just, uh, we just got to stick together as a community and get through it. Get, come to the other side of this. I think one of the things I miss most this time of year, I uh, certainly am more of a homebody than I used to be. I used to be super social butterfly. But I think as we get older and our priorities change and our responsibilities grow, at least for most of us they do, um, some of that goes away. But I miss baseball. I miss being, you know, having that community spirit. I miss Sundays with the families. You know, I miss, there are things right now that I think we're all missing. And uh, comment below. I want to know what you guys are missing the most right now and uh, what you hope goes back to normal. There we go. We've got our orange dots on. We've got the backing on. We've got our blue breast. I like the way the striping came out. It's fairly muted. Although you can see the detail and I'm glad I didn't define it like I would on a perch. Although this could almost double as a perch pattern. Just not with the orange stripes. This definitely looks like that darter. We're going to get a good solid heat set on, on this. And then we're going to put those pectoral fins on and then some eyes and I think we'll probably be ready for clear coat, folks. Just real quick, I just grabbed a scratch piece of paper from down here. And I'm not going to do anything super difficult. I'm just going to give a quick definition build here to the... Just a couple of the little pieces of gill. Again, nothing super hard. Get that piece in. Doesn't need to be dark. Don't want it really to be dark because both of the pictures that I have really don't clearly define a whole bunch of shading difference in the gill plates. But just enough to show that it's there. I'm good with that. I'm going to use a lighter color of brown for the pectoral fin. And again, it's going to be super, super light. Not doing really highly defined anything on this because these fins are fairly transparent. But I'm going to come over and uh, shade the entire fin a little bit of brown. And it's a small bait, so I think I like this one. This is Russ Allen's Insane Custom Fin Wheel. I'm going to use the smallest one that we have on here. Yep. And we're going to go just in front of this stripe here. So we're going to set this up, hopefully for success. just in front of that stripe. A 
I like it. And just kind of scrape this off because we're going to use it on the other side. You don't want any junk on there. And come back and do the same thing. Set it just in front of that. All right. See now that stripe indicates on the same side, same area. The only thing else that we're going to do is throw that off and hit this. Actually, let me clean this out a little bit. I'm going to hit it with that black magenta on the edges just to better define the edges of the pectoral fin and the back part. Hardly do anything at all. Let me blow this out. That's how long it'll last, folks. I had that completely turned off. I forgot I'd stepped away for a little bit. Good deal. California Air Tools is what I use um, at the behest of Gerald Novick. Usually when he has something to say, it's worth saying. And uh, best pay attention to it because that man knows his stuff. So when I was asking for recommendations, that's what he gave me. That's what I've been using for over two years now. And I absolutely love it. Love, love, love it. It has been a huge defining difference in my, my control, the ability to control what I do. I run an extra, this is a, he also recommend I do that to get an extra pressure gauge that I can do right here at the spray bench. I have a whole video on setup. I'll link that in the description below if you guys want to see that. I'm gonna come back in, set this back into the same exact spot. And give just a little bit more definition. How cool is that? So the sun is shining today. It's another real pretty day. Cold though, folks. What's what's the deal with our weather? Usually, let's see, what is what is today? The ninth maybe of May? We would be uh, roasting. Literally roasting. There's your extra special definition there. Let's do some eyes. There we go. Now we've got that off. Wow, this is looking like a darter. My package has been delivered. I think on this build, now this takes a five, like a 4.5 or a five millimeter. I think a five will fit it. I just want to be sure. Um, I've got these really pretty, that might be too big. Is it too big? No. Let's see, before we super glue and destroy it. I just want to see if that's gonna, I this might need a four or five. I'm gonna try this and if it doesn't work, yeah, that'll work. Okay, good. Um, now we can super glue it and get our fingers stuck. So these are from John over at Jets and Lures. I know I've been featuring him a lot, but I have a lot of really cool stuff from him and he's one of my custom guys. Um, on the bigger game baits and swim baits. I like dead meat, but dead meat is slam busy and go check out dead meat right now because he's doing the autism awareness. Uh, he's doing some waffles and some really good stuff, some donatable raffle type deals. So go check him out. Uh, but this is from Jets and Lures, my buddy John. And let's just get the don't need that much. Don't need that much. Just a little bit. A little dab will do you. 
What is that? That was a sour cream commercial back in the day, wasn't it? Daisy, little dabble, do you? Or hair cream? Might have been Brillo hair cream. I don't even know. I just remember hearing the phrase when I was a kid. Tell me where that went. Somebody will know. Somebody out here in YouTube land is going to know where that came from. A little dabble, do you? Comment below where the heck that thing came. It's going to be stuck in my head now. I'll have to research it or not. All right, we are coming down the home stretch on this build, folks. This is my interpretation of the Blue Breast Darter. And look at that. I don't know if you guys can see that. Sorry. But there is what doing a transparent bait primer on the bottom. There's your blue green. Almost forgot. Hey, um, I have discovered, because I'm a big fan of Uniball, it's a Japanese pen to begin with. They're not super expensive in the way of custom ink and pens. It is a water fast, light fast, permanent um, acrylic based pen. But this is the Uniball Air, and it's my new favorite pen. Uniball Air. Get that in there. Just lays down a really nice signature. There you have it. Well, folks, that's just going to about do it for me today. I hope I've been able to teach you guys a few things. I enjoy you guys stopping by the channel. It's always good to see your smiling faces. And as always, happy casting from Jekyll Bates. This has been the Blue Breast Darter Build. Dip de doo da in that diamond clear. And there we have it. It's so pretty.